Hey everybody, Mr. Jones here with you, and we are going to be jumping into Unit 4, Linear Regression. It sounds really hard with some, some big words here, but um, it's all basically done in Desmos, which is nice. Okay, so I'm going to show that in Desmos, uh, and this unit is short and sweet, so only a couple of videos to go through here before we jump into Unit 5. So here we go with Desmos and Linear Regression. All right, everybody, we are here, and we are going to talk a little bit about the, this linear regression, okay? And, and another way to say it would be like scatter plots. You've probably heard that before, and you've seen these. Um, but specifically, linear regression is kind of like you might have heard the word line of best fit, right? So if we have um, like a scatter plot, and again, that means you have just a, a, a graph of these points that are kind of a lot of the time they do kind of go in the same direction um, and sometimes they're kind of random and then sometimes they go in like the other direction. Again, just looking at this, again, you guys know that x is the side-to-side -side axis and that's the independent variable. y is the dependent variable, that's the up and down axis, right? And so what a graph shows is the relationship between those two things or those two units. So if you look at this one, right, it's talking about how, right, if the, the y-axis is income, income is dependent on the x variable, which is the number of years experience. So this would be like the number, like a, like a job, like a salary, right? So if you, it says the number of years that you work at a job, that kind of, you know, determines what your income is a lot of the time, right? And so if you look at that, right, the more years that you work, obviously your salary oftentimes goes up as well, right? So, and we would say that, yeah, this has a positive trend, meaning the slope of this line of best fit would be positive, right? Because it's going up from left to right. We talked about that with the graphing lines unit, right? So we could say as the years of experience increases, the income also increases. And that is true for positive trends. So just looking at another one here real quick, right? So this is showing, right, the number of moose on this island and its its relationship to the number of wolves, okay? So this would be saying the number of moose is dependent on the number of wolves, right? And so the more wolves there are, the less moose there are because wolves, I guess, eat moose, which is unfortunate, but that's okay. So as the number of wolves, we could say increases, the number of moose decreases, right? So that, so as more wolves show up and they eat some of our moose buddies, um, they uh, the number of moose goes down, right? And so that makes sense. But specifically, what we're going to look for, right, is if we defined, like if we, if we put like a, a y equals mx plus b equation on this line so that we could kind of measure like, okay, yeah, we see that it's decreasing, but like what's the rate at which it does decrease, right? And so we see all these little different instances of when they measured, right? Okay, at, th at this point, you know, this would be like when there's 25 wolves, there was only like 80 moose or something, right? But we wanted to give a general kind of pattern or equation to this line of best fit, this black line going through here, right? And so moves decrease by blank when wolves increase by blank. So let's kind of look for, right, if we zoom in a little bit and we look, right, where does it go through a corner of our little grid here? And... It's, it's close, right? It's close in some parts, but I would say it's close enough just for our purposes that right here, this point, I would say is 2 comma 600, right? So when there's two wolves, there's 600 moose. Well, moose are taken over, right? And then the next point would be down here. Again, that's not quite on the corner, but we'll say that it is. Um, so at six wolves, there are 500 moose, okay? So so what's the change there? What will the slope be, right? And we did this um, in, in unit two, right? So we say, okay, as the number of moose move down by, again, that's one space, but we look, 600 to 500 is how much it's actually moving down. So as moose decrease by 100, right? So that's a decrease of 100, 600 to 500. The wolves increase by, what? It goes from two over here to six, so wolves increase by four. Okay. So again, kind of saying that as a slope, kind of right. We we and again, I I suggest making a table of values here and, and looking at that. But for our purposes, we don't have to do that. But so our slope here, we could say right would be negative a hundred over four. Okay. And right with our rise over run or change in y over change in x. 
So if I reduced that, negative 100 divided by 4 would be negative 25. Okay. So negative 25 would be my slope. Okay. And so that would be, right, so that's kind of saying approximately the number of moose goes down by 25 for each wolf that arrives. Okay. And so then the initial value, there are blank when there are no wolves. Okay, so no wolves in the house, right? So if we go to wolves on the x-axis, we go to zero. Okay, how many moose are there? Well, that's up here, right? So that would be right at about 650. Okay. And again, we're approximating. We, if we were on Desmos, we could actually zoom in here and see. But yeah, we're approximating. Okay. So this got moved down. But the equation of this trend line, okay, putting these together, right, what I just found was my slope, my m value, and my initial value, that would be my b value, or my, right, that's where it also touches the y-axis up here at 650. So putting that together in my y equals mx plus b equation, it's going to be y equals negative 25x plus 650. Okay, that would be my approximate equation of this trend line, okay? But for, for us, we're not going to go through that long process each time where we're approximating and looking at the graph. I'm going to teach you guys how to do it in Desmos, okay? And we're going to use this fancy equation right here, and that is going to do it for us. Okay, so let's do this right here. This page right here just has an example, okay? So we're just going to look at this one example, and then I'm going to do a whole bunch more examples in the next video, okay? So... This one says, the data shows the gallons of oil in the tank by the hour. Okay, and it just kind of has, like, this is what I gave it to my students in the past, so it kind of shows you everything that Desmos gives you, but I'll just do that to the side just so you can see the process, okay? So, and again, it does give the steps here, though, right? So we do first thing, right? It gives us this table of values, and it's showing it in a weird way, right? We, you might be used to, like, the T-chart here. Um, this is kind of giving it horizontally, but that's fine. Um, either way, you get the table in there, right? So let's just say the first variable, hours, would go with x. Okay, so let's just put all those values down. 0, 1, 3, 8, 10. All right. So that's putting it in my table. And again, I, I sorry, you saw it, but I got my table from this plus button and then table right there. Okay, and then the y values are those gallons, right? So 0, 19, 61. Okay, now you might be saying, uh oh, where are all my points? They should show up here. And they do show up, okay? You see that they are all kind of, obviously, some of these are big numbers. So they're all like this, okay? But something that happens in this situation, right? And step two says adjust your axes. What that means is, right, our x axis, right, fits in the normal like 1 through 10, right? In a normal graph, we're able to see 1 through 10. But these y values are a lot bigger than 1 through 10, right? So if we went in here into graph settings, what we can do is, is adjust, right, these x values and y values to kind of fit my graph better. And my x-axis is actually okay. I'm going to leave it like that. But instead of, right, right now this is saying it's showing negative, or negative 12 to positive 11. Um, and so let me change that from negative 12, let's just say 180. Because that'll, that's a little bit bigger than my biggest number there. And so you can see, okay, when I moved it to 180, now I have a better view. And again, it's weird here. You kind of have to get used to these not being in an exact straight line, right? And that's okay. These are versions of scatter plots um, that we are looking at, right? So even though it's not a ton of points like there was in the other problem, this would still be a scatter plot. And we could still use a line of best fit to, to calculate what this line would be, right? And then so it says enter your regressions model. That just means that's this crazy equation right here. Okay, so this is something that you'll want to have written down somewhere, okay? You guys are actually lucky because formerly, in other classes, in other years, kids would have to memorize this equation, um, but you guys don't have to because you're learning this online. But I type that exact equation into Desmos, okay? So look, I type Y, and then you might be wondering, how do I get that little number one in there? If you just type the normal number one, or if I just press this number one right here, you see that it automatically makes it smaller, okay? And then, and I'll explain what that's for in a second. But then we do this, I call it the squiggly, okay? The squiggly, that means approximately, right? Because what we're doing is approximating the line here. It's not an exact line that goes through all the points. And you can see that squiggly line is right here on my alphabet keyboard. Boom, okay? So Y1, squiggly, M, X, those are normal. And then again, that number one, 
Okay, it's going to make it small. The reason that we do that, okay, is because you look in your table and it's going x1 and y1, and we kind of want to tie this equation into what these values are in the table, right? So that's why we have to do uh, one, put the ones next to them, okay? And something that happens too, you might have an error sometimes um, because these don't have ones with them. They might have twos or threes. So just change the table to ones all the time. That yells at you. And then anyway, y1 squiggly mx1 plus b, okay? And it gives us, it, you see that it draws the line in here, awesome, okay? But it also gives us all these crazy statistics, residuals, uh, parameters. So what we are concerned with here, okay, right? What we want, similar to this problem that I did up here, I want to know what is the y equals mx plus b equation of this line right here. Okay, so it might not look like it here, but Desmos is actually giving us the the everything that we need for the equation of the line of best fit okay so if we look at this right it gives us all these crazy numbers but it's also giving us m and b right so if we look at that right again tying that in the m and b values are the numbers i need for my linear equation right so instead of typing in y equals mx plus b right i know it says it tells me the m value is uh, 14.1414 Okay, and the B value is 5.1, I'll round it up to 5.18. Okay, but again, that I was just put those into my line of best fit equation. Okay, so my answer here is going to be Y equals 14.41 X plus 5.18. There we go. And so how nice is that? Desmos, all we have to do is type in that table, type in this crazy equation, and then it gives me the M and B values that I need for my equation. Okay, so that's the basics of doing linear regression or line of best fit in Desmos. Okay, now the next video I'm going to do a bunch more examples uh, and, and just walk you through what that looks like to do some more word problems. Alrighty, so thanks for following. Good job. See you later.